guys, I'm here with a, another tutorial for you. We're gonna be doing this really gorgeous balayage look. I know that there's a lot of balayage on lighter hair, but we're gonna show you how to do it on darker hair. And turn your head to the side for me and get this like gorgeous, super soft, natural color using Kenra Color. So let's go into the salon and see how it's done. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram to stay connected. Or get any of my contact information to come get your own hair done at my salon. First off, here's a little before and after of Taylor's hair. You guys can see she was mostly just her regular dark natural color and we took her to this beautiful balayage that has no harsh lines. So first of all, let me introduce you to my Kenra Color Clay Lightener. This baby lifts up to seven levels and is by far my favorite clay lightener that I've tried yet. I'm also using the two inch wood paint chips brushes. These are actually from Home Depot and work incredibly for balayage. So the formula that I'm going to be doing is basically what the directions on our Kenra little tub says. So I'm doing a one to two ratio. I always, always, always weigh my products because this ensures that every time I go and mix up a batch of lightener, I'm going to get the same results. So I'm doing 30 grams of the powder lightener to 60 grams of the 40 volume developer because what this is gonna do is lift like crazy and it's also going to give us this beautiful consistency like icing. You guys can see it's not super liquidy. It is like this really awesome, frothy, creamy consistency that you need for a balayage. And of course you guys know, I'm gonna be adding in 1 16th of my Olaplex number one. You're gonna to wanna to go in with less Olaplex when you are doing balayaging so that it doesn't alter the lift and the results that you're going to see in your hair. So what I'm going to do is set up my station. You guys see I have all of my favorite tools set up and ready to go. And I am using the Funked Up Film by Fermar. It is the best stuff ever. So sectioning my client's hair, I always section right behind the ears so that I have the back separate from the front. This just makes sure that I kind of know where people's hair is falling and it keeps me clean and organized. So because Taylor has shorter hair, I'm not gonna start super far down in the nape because you're not really going to see that. And on shorter hair, it can look like weird chunks. Instead, I'm starting about midway up on her head, kind of where you start your partial foil. So. What another tip that I learned is instead of using your actual wood chip paintbrush, um, you want to keep that out of the lightener as much as you can. So use another brush to scoop it into your hands so your paintbrush isn't sitting in your lightener all the time because these things are disposable. You can use them for about um, up to like five or six times. So what I do is I put it on the back of my hand and then I start to sweep this into the hair. You guys can see I'm using a zigzag pattern. This just makes it even softer and more diffuse in the long run instead of working with straight lines. I like to put this on the mid shaft of the hair and then sweep up into the scalp area but without obviously touching the scalp because lightener on the scalp is going to create some really awful hot spots. So I'm creating a few different patterns. This one I'm creating a W pattern and then just simply sweeping this to the ends. For this first initial layer, I'm going to kind of sandwich the hair into my plastic wrap just to make sure that it doesn't fall off because that's definitely not fun. I'm doing a second section in the mid area and I'm just sweeping this in basically the same exact way and then I'm gonna bring that plastic wrap over and under. Um, this stuff does not clean. It's like special non-clinging plastic wrap so it's a little tricky to first learn but once you do it's a godsend because all the other ones just wanna crinkle into a big old ball and it just makes you super frustrated. So using these brushes guys, I don't know if you guys can see how easy it is for me to just diffuse these lines but working with these brushes and you just kind of do a controlled amount of product is amazing. So I'm using a technique where instead of going straight across the head, I start to kind of brick lay this pattern up and I'll show it in the head diagram. So I'm taking out two side sections instead of doing straight across and then I'm going in with my balayage. Again, using zigzag sections and then applying the lightener in the mids and then sweeping it up into either my slants, my W's, my V's, whatever it is. This just gives you more control of where you wanna place your lightener. Now with Taylor's hair, because we're wanting to do just this really gorgeous, subtle um, color to her hair without adding too much blonde, instead of completely saturating the ends fully through, I just painted the very surface. 
Now, if your client wants a more blonde look, you can definitely go in and saturate those ends. But for her, you know, sometimes less is more. It still makes a huge impact on what the hair looks like with it being on the surface. And I love the simplicity of this color. So I just like to do small little layers of this plastic wrap and lay it on top and then move on to my next section. You guys can see I'm working in pretty large sections. I'm not taking super, super small sections. And what's great about using these um, paint brushes is that you can cover a very large surface in a little amount of time. I mean, you guys can see I haven't fast forwarded this um, part of the clip and just laying in this color takes me a few seconds, which I love because you know, time is money and I can go in and do this look on a client in less amount of time than it normally would take with using smaller um, color brushes and things like that. So once I have that done, again, I'm going to insulate my lightener with a little plastic wrap and then move on to the next section. I love bricklaying these colors because it really ensures that the highlight parts are hitting exactly where I want to so that they're not all touching in the same spot as they go up the head, but they're touching in different areas, giving you that perfect dimension with the low light underneath that's not getting painted, and then the surface painting on top. And then I just kind of work my way all the way up into the crown where I've sectioned it from um, the back into the front. And you guys can see using really soft swiping motions, you guys can get the correct amount of product. Now you don't want to do it to where you can't really see it because then um, the products might dry out. Saturation is really important to make sure that you're not going too heavy or pushing too hard into the hair um, because the more that you push into the hair, the more uneven your balayage is going to look. So making sure that you're doing surface painting where you're trying to sweep this color up is super, super important. And then again, just laying that insulation right on top, not pushing it into the hair, just lightly laying it on top so that it sticks because we wanna make sure that it is not going to create any cheetah print spots because that's just not pretty. And I'm finishing up the top section in the back part of the hair and it really takes just a few minutes to do this, which is super awesome. And then we're gonna work in the front. Now I like to work in diagonal back sections. That's just my preference. And what I do is I sweep it up towards the face so that they're getting a really nice, gorgeous sun kiss look in the front and then kind of go a little bit further down. So these are more of like a slanted balayage painting section versus doing V's and W's. You can totally throw some in there. I like to do that as well, just to give it some beautiful variation. And then you just lay your plastic wrap. Make sure that you're doing it underneath on this first initial section so that it's not going to lay against your client's face and um, cause any burning or lightening of their skin because we obviously don't want that to happen. So you guys can see in this section, this is a really beautiful slant and then just keeping it up towards the face so that the brightness is staying in the face area. And look at this underneath, you do not see any product, which means that we're doing the correct amount of tension and saturation on our sections. And then again, I just layer each one with my little cellophane wrap. I love balayaging so, so much, and I didn't realize how much I loved it until I started working with these paint brushes. I just think they're so incredible, and they're like 97 cents at Home Depot, so I have a full stock of them at the salon and at home. So finishing up this top section, you guys will note that I have kind of a little mohawk section up top because Taylor parts her hair on the right side. So I wanna make sure that I'm attacking that um, top area differently. So I'm going to section this first piece out that's going to be her face framing bang area. So I'm gonna do this one underneath, so right against her hairline. Instead of painting on top, I wanna make sure that when she pulls her hair back, it's gonna be beautiful and blonde in the front. So she doesn't have a big, you know, like gaping black hole. And I'm just gonna lay that down on top of itself and then move on to the next section. And then we're going to paint on top like we normally were. So it's just that very first section that I like to paint underneath so that they get this money piece that pops in the underneath part. So in these sections, I'm doing a diagonal back sectioning so you guys can see the way that my part line is. And then I like to do slants on this top part and then just kind of feather that in to keep some dimension. And it just creates the most 
gorgeous, gorgeous color. So if you know on the section, see how the left side comes up higher because that's where her part line is. And then the right side has a little bit more dimension. That is going to make some of the most beautiful balayaged color in the end when you see the hair either straight or curled because you're keeping a low light, but you're also keeping that just like super subtle color right near her part line to ensure that she's not gonna have any harsh lines, so this is gonna be the softest grow out ever. And you guys can see, I'm just taking sections, going a diagonal back all the way back until we finish up this section so that it's just gonna be so gorgeous. I seriously love, I love doing this top part. It is so much fun. And then again, just making sure that we're laying that cellophane right on top so that it stays all nice and insulated. So. You can see there's nothing popping out underneath that section. This finished up her whole head. Um, look at how beautiful this is. It's not super heavy. You can see the actual processing of the hair. I'm going to put her under a light amount of heat. These are our infrared rotating, um, I don't wanna say dryers because they're actual heaters. I'm using a very, very, very low temperature as you can see here. Um, if you're doing clay lighteners, they most of the time tell you not to use heat, so I break the rules and I use very low heat, and then just kind of wait until it hits the exact color that I want, which you guys can see she lifted to a level nine. This Kenra clay lightener is seriously incredible. I love, love, love this lightener. So then I'm just gonna remove all of her plastic wrap when she's finished. I also love this process because it takes like a, a few minutes to take out. And then all you do is lean your client back and start the washing process. Now what I do is I rinse the hair, then I tone, then I Olaplex step two and shampoo and condition. Just to make sure we're keeping her hair super healthy and happy. I love to towel dry before I tone to make sure that I get everything nice and combed out. If you guys haven't tried the Wow Comb, it's amazing. I love this guy. And I'm going to tone her hair with 9N and a little 9GB. Her hair was already a super pretty gorgeous color. Make sure to swoosh your color, not shake it. But I just wanted to give her hair just a little bit more depth with doing a nice little gloss toner. And plus, the Shades EQ is my favorite because it adds so much shine and just seals your cuticle down. So I left this on for about 10 minutes to wait until I saw that perfect like sandy tone in her hair. Oh my gosh, I love this toner so much. And then I'm gonna go in and to finish off her hair after blowing it out, I'm going to curl it using my T3 curling iron, the one inch clip. And you guys can see, I'm kind of curling the top and then just pulling the ends through to give her that really awesome modern curl. And I like to take the curls front and back, so away from the face and towards the face, and then finish it off with a nice setting spray. And if you guys have not tried Shabang Bang, uh, dry spray wax. This stuff is awesome for adding in some texture to these curls. And then I just comb everything out using a wide tooth comb. This little guy is my BFF when it comes to curling hair and brushing everything out. And we were talking about how much we love her color. I was so impressed by this Kenra clay lightener and so impressed with just how all of this works together. If you guys have never tried a clay lightener, I highly suggest you get to go try it out. Try out this one. Grab a 30 and 40 volume developer and find yourself someone to play on because it is such a fun clay lightener and sits so differently than regular powder lighteners. Look at this top area. There is no harsh lines. It's gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then you are missing out on all of my videos when they upload. So be sure to go click that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos.